Understanding what's happening with computers in schools will assist you as a teacher. Um, over time, the use of computers in schools has changed, um, particularly in secondary school, but it's also changing quite rapidly now in primary schools. Um, in the late 2000s, there was a large influx of funding, particularly into high schools, to allow them to have one-to-one -one computers for all, all students, particularly starting with year nines. And that also provided a lot of infrastructure for networking, um, for the internet and that, and that sort of access. Now that has started to flow down into primary schools as well, where pretty much all primary schools in, in Australia now have got some internet access. And many, certainly in Queensland, have got quite good broadband internet access. And increasingly, there are more and more computers being incorporated into primary schools for schools to use. Now, it's not uniform. There are some schools where they have lots and lots of computers. Every kid has got access to a tablet or a computer, um, even some state schools. But in many, there is a limited amount. Now, there's normally at least one or two computers in each classroom. Certainly, there would be a couple in the library. And generally, in primary schools, there would be a, um, a laptop trolley or tablet trolley or basket where you would take a class set of devices to particular classrooms and they would be shared within the school. Now, some primary schools have got computer labs still, but that's becoming less and less common uh, because of the flexibility of laptops and tablets. So increasingly, though, more and more devices are being made available for students at all levels. And that opens up lots of challenges, but also some great opportunities. So one thing to think about is how these devices are going to enable you to do different ways of teaching and engaging students with different tasks and learning activities. Now, of course, in digital technologies, students will need to use various technologies to learn about the technologies. So learning about how to use computers, how to log in, how to create passwords, how to um, use the internet, how to program, how to use small databases, things of that nature. But it extends to all of their learning areas, all the subjects that they study, English, maths, science. They will increasingly be using technology to assist in that. And technology changes, it improves. So a lot of primary schools now are starting to explore the use of virtual reality. Normally with only a couple of headsets and it's sort of just exploring it, but that exploration is beginning. Likewise with drones, which are essentially just um, robot devices that can go in three dimensions. So there are new technologies emerging all of the time. And of course, we're seeing the emergence of artificial intelligence at the moment. Now, as you get into the busyness of being a teacher, it's often difficult to stay up to date with the latest trends happening in technology. Uh, sometimes you may have conferences that you go to. Sometimes you might have professional development put on by the school or you've got an opportunity to go to a professional development um, event. And you, of course, you may be involved in a professional association. We'll talk a bit, a bit about more about that next week. But one way of staying up to date is to keep an eye out in the literature. And every year there are normally some reports produced about what new things are happening in education. And in particular, around educational technologies. And so by just having a look at those every year, you'll see what sort of new things are coming available into schools so that you're at least aware of what's occurring. And you may find that you have one or two of these that you're interested in utilizing in your classroom as an innovator, someone that's trying out new technologies before they become mainstream and exploring new ways of engaging and enhancing your teaching and learning through the use of these technologies. So have a look at a couple of the reports that are provided, which give you a bit of an overview of what sort of technologies are coming in the next five years. And the idea that these reports are written is probably the most important thing. Of course, what happens in the next five years after that, we can't really predict that yet, but we know that there'll be something happening. And being familiar with that and being on top of that will help you better prepare your students and of course, improve your own teaching.